Will next Ramos be hard and classic? I'm going to say like what my opinion is. I think that it will be the hardest raid because Nax Ramos was partially tuned for people that actually had consumables and stuff. But with like the world buff meta and like how good people are at the game now, I don't think it's really going to be that challenging. Hey guys, Hamster Wheel here with a new video and today we're going to talk a little bit about next Ramos. More specifically, my predictions for Next Ramus when it will go live on Classic WoW. Mm -hmm. Now, the last time we got to see Next Ramus in its original form, by Blizzard at least, was in 2006. So that was almost 14 years ago. The Few math checks back out. Back then, got to see it, and when original Next Ramus was replaced in the Wrath of Liching expansion, there yeah. was no way to go back and check that place out, at least on Blizzard's official servers. And since then, there's always been an air of mystery around that place. Yeah, that. And throughout the yeah, years, good way to the legendary it. difficulty would be mentioned over and over again in conversations about raiding in vanilla. And well, my video definitely added fuel to that fire. And yeah, he he made this really big video about like next Ramos being like super hard. Um, as I said, like I don't think it's really going to be as challenging, but the fact that the raid got taken out of the game and so few people ever did it, it has like this mystique to it that people want to do it just because they want to know what was it really like. It proves there is a huge interest in the classic version of Next Remus. Yeah. Now, admittedly, that video I made wasn't perfect. I mean, there were a few mistakes in that video. No videos which is why are perfect. I revisited that video a while after publishing it as well as making a third video where I talked about this raid once again after I cleared it on a private server. And well, today we're getting closer and closer to seeing next Ramos come the classic. I mean, sure, we still have Ankiraj to look forward to, but since there's a lot of hype and curiosity around this raid, in my humble opinion, I'd like to share with you my thoughts and predictions on what's going to happen with next Ramos in Classic WoW. Okay, here we go. Now let's start off with itemization. I've stated multiple times that I'm not pleased with the way Blizzard handled items in Classic WoW. Many items that people are wearing right now used to be much weaker in the beginning of the game. So it didn't come to my surprise that even regular guilds were steamrolling through content like Molten Core and Blackwing Lair. Of course there's a ton of other factors why that's the case, yeah. but let's just focus on this one for now. So ba people would have People would have rolled it over anyway. Like having 50 extra spell power for for BWL or for MC, they would have rolled it over anyway. Like it, it, it it's e it's easy on a fundamental level. Like the mechanics are easy, the game is easy, the rotations are easy. It's just easy. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that people were doing early vanilla content with late vanilla gear, it did, which really the, the, skewed the balance, in my opinion. That is However, true. the later that we is move true. down the line of raids, the more the content is going to catch up with the gear. And in next Ramus, most of the items and their itemization will be equal to the actual raid content that's released. Basically, there's yeah. no... What I'm saying, yeah, that's actually very true. Like, ZG is the same thing. So, Nax Ramus is being released with the gear that was intended to be used for Nax Ramus in that state. And I think that's what's really going to make, like, Nax Ramus and AQ, to a lesser extent, uh, a little bit more challenging. And uh, I think that's a good thing. Louder? Okay, I'll turn it up. Sorry, I didn't even know that. You're wrong. You haven't played the version with the gear that's worse? Uh, no, I'm not wrong. Because basically what I can do, it's easy to simulate what the options are, right? You just take off all your spell power gear as a mage, and then you multiply that damage across the entire raid. And then you look at what the difference would be between output of people that had the, had the gear and people that didn't have the gear. All you have to do is take the gear off on live game right now, and you have an exact representation of what it would look like. It's not like this is some kind of amazing like mathematical formula. You just take people's current spell power, and you minus 100 to it. Is that going to make the raid easier? Well, or harder? Yeah, it's going to make it harder. Is that going to really change the outcome of the raid? No, it's not. People kill Ragnaros. Most people don't even know that Ragnaros has a sun's face. They don't even know that happens. They have no idea because they just clear it that fast. And casters aren't even the majority of the damage. Most of the damage is melee. No more advantage of having gear that is more powerful than it was way back in vanilla, when for instance Molten Core was the only raid available. Apart from maybe one or two items, but most of them will match the patch that Next Ramus was released in. Mm -hmm. 
Next up, we gotta talk about world buffs. Yeah. Now, this is going to be a big topic for raiding guilds. It's a huge that factor. Want to raid Framus. Right now, world buffs are a bit of a novelty. I mean, do we really need them to clear Black and Lair Zo group? No. Not really. I mean, the only reason people get world buffs yeah. now is to Absolutely be more not. powerful and get the raid done quicker. Yeah, it's There's for just fun. no boss people do that it is for fun. undoable without world buffs in Black and Lair. In Naxxramas, however, things are quite different. And while I believe that every boss should be doable without world buffs, some bosses are admittedly extremely Low hard them. without them. Yeah. Especially if your guild steps into Naxxramas for the first time and isn't wearing any of the raid gear that drops there yet. Patchwork is a really good example, as that is considered to be a gear check, and it's a boss me and my old guild on Chaos always got world buffs for. Bef it is not going to be a gear check. So, Patchwork, what is the DPS that you need to do for Patchwork? I'm trying to remember what it is. So, does, is his enrage four or six minutes? Okay, Patchwork Vanilla WoW. And let's see here, he has about four million health. We'll just round that up to four million. And let's see... Uh, Berserk, seven minute timer. Okay, so he has a seven minute timer. So you take seven minutes, and so you take 300,000, uh, sorry, four million DPS, or sorry, four million health, and then you divide that by how many people are in the raid. So let's go ahead and look at this. So you have, uh, we'll look at calculator, let me open up calculator. Okay, there we go. All right, so you've got a, uh, so you've got the four million health, right? So you have four million health, and how many DPS do you have in the raid? So how many DPS do you have in the raid? Let's say 28 DPS. Okay, so divide that by 28. And that's how much damage each player needs to do. So their DPS of 7 minutes. So how, how many seconds is 7 minutes? So that is 7 times 6. So that's a, uh, what is that? 420 seconds? Yeah, 420 seconds. So divide that by 420. So you need to do 340 DPS in order to kill Patrick before the Enrage. Three hundred and forty DPS. That's bare minimum? Yes, bare minimum. Okay. Like I I just want to put this into perspective of how hard it really is. And this is also, by the way, counting people that have... This is AQ-geared players. Four, we attempted to clear the entire wing. The Enrage timer on Patchwork really leaves very little wiggle room. So these yeah. world buffs will become much more important and much more of a necessity. And because of that, losing world buffs is going to hurt a lot more. I love Not this clip, just dude. in a wipe but also in the world environment, yep. which is a nice segue to the next thing I want to talk about. You see, with Classic WoW having way more people on one server, mm -hmm. the Eastern Plaguelands will probably be the new hotbed for ganking. Pretty as much. people will have to yeah, take that's the flight path to Light's Hope Chapel, and then walk to the entrance of Naxxramas, which is close to Stratholm. So that trip from the flight path to the actual entrance is going to be one hell of a dangerous road. Not to mention that with so many players on one server compared to Vanilla WoW, the chance of ganking is even higher than normal. Yeah, of course. Unless Blizzard decides to bring back layering once again. We'll just have to wait and see. Oh, and by the way, the entrance to next Ramus is just a small ziggurat with a portal. I always so liked this. I thought it was cool. So this area will be another place where entire yeah. guilds can be wiped out by a bunch of mages with yeah. AoE spells or a multi-boxer. Yeah. I predict that there's going to be a lot more frustration in guilds when it comes to losing world buffs and oh, some fuck, extra yeah. hostility between guilds on a particular People server. are going to get furious. Another thing that will create more frustration in guilds is the higher list of required consumables. No longer will a flask of supreme power, a wizard oil, and maybe one or two extra buffs be enough just to clear stuff. Oh no, Next Ramus requires you to carry a lot of resistance potions as well, which to be fair already get introduced in Ankiraj with bosses like Huhuran. Do you guys know how much health Huhuran has? Let's go ahead and look. I think uh, Huhuran has uh, 1.3 million. I think it could be even less than that. It could be like 1 million. Yeah, 1 million health. And this is... Am I looking at classic or... Yeah, this is classic here. Huhuran has 1 million health. So, for example here, that's how much health Ragnaros has. Okay. 
So Huharan has, uh, and let's see the damage here. Noxious Poison, obviously this does a lot, direct damage to people. Uh, the AoE Sleep, yeah, this does do a lot of damage. But people can outheal this. This boss is going to die so fast that it won't even matter. Like for context, like let me just show you guys how fast a guild can do 1 million, 1 million health of damage, okay? Um, let's see. All right, so we'll go all the way over. This is progress that cleared Molten Core in 17 minutes. And let's go ahead and look at Rag. All right, here we go. Here's Ragnaros. Okay. So Ragnaros has, I think, 1.3 million. This is how fast Huhuran will die. And this is also, obviously, with... Uh, if you look at their gear here, they have BWL gear. So I... Yeah, yeah, actually, no. This is B basically what they, what they have normally, right? Already at 70% health. Look at that. Fifty percent health. New raid boss. Same amount of health as Ragnaros. Mages are forced to be frostback. Yeah, and mages can't go fire. Mages will do even more damage in uh, uh, in this new raid. Look at that. Boss is already pretty much dead. Mages will be fire in AQ. Exactly. 2017. Well, the point is still the same. That's one Huhu run. Now, obviously, Huhu run does do a stun 20 seconds into the fight that will lock down all the melee. And so the melee having, like, if you have a greater nature, nature resistance potion and you have, like, maybe one piece of nature resist gear, like Heart of Noxion, you won't need anything else because the boss will die so fast that your healers can just burn mana healing through everything and you can use your own consumables to heal through it as well and you won't need anything else to kill Huron. So you can get used to having a stack of resistance potions in your bag. Yeah, that's but not true. But with next Ramus, it's next level. You'll it's need not. resistance potions for multiple schools of magic and when your guild gets pretty far into next Ramus, you'll start to burn through those really quick. With bosses like Loathep, the Four Horsemen, Saffron, and Kel'Thuzad requiring a lot of resistance potions if your guild hasn't got those bosses on farm yet. Which also means the prices of mats to create those potions will go up in price significantly. Mm -hmm. Basically what I'm trying to say is that raiding will be a lot more expensive in next dramas. And wipes will be a lot more painful for you and your supply of raiding mats and gold. Just be prepared. Expensive wipes like that can really wear people out and make them not want to do next Ramus anymore as it's a huge time and gold sink. Yeah. So what about the bosses themselves? How fast do I think stuff will get cleared? Well, I think guilds like apes will probably zerk through most of the bosses in next Ramus in no time. Yeah, but then again, we're that. talking about one of the best, if not the best raiding guild in classic. And yep. it's unfair to look at how fast they're clearing it and then decide next Ramus isn't hard at all. I mean, it's like saying a game like Ninja Gaiden is actually pretty easy because some speedrunner who practiced thousands and thousands of hours managed to beat it in less than half an hour with no deaths. I'm interested in seeing if they can actually manage to clear the entire raid before the weekly reset as a boss like Saffron requires a lot of frost resistance gear. At least... How much health does Saffron have? Nobody even knows how much health Saffron has. <laughs> Nobody has any idea. I think it has 3 million health. Uh, that, that's the number that I remember. So, you're already going to have a number of pieces of gear that have frost resistance on it. And you can also farm lockouts and get frozen runes that way too. Because you're going to have people farming out the different areas and getting frozen runes through the lockouts. He has a uh, 2.6 million, 2.7 million. Yeah, I, I don't even new blog post on Orbos. Okay, I'll look at that after I finish this video. Okay, just uh, be patient. Boss, you're fast to go. I think he's saying people might die fast too. Um, it depends on like how much frost resist the player is really expected to have. I think that I mean even right now in like current WoW or like current classic WoW, you're gonna have a number of people who already have like you know a handful of frost resistance pieces to begin with. And I'm not saying like a lot of them, but maybe like, you know, three or four pieces. Add that with Frost Resistance Aura and maybe like a Frost Resistance Potion. And you can even use like, uh, I think there's a few other consumables too. This is not going to be a challenge at all. Like it, it will not be. The only real challenge with Saffron, there's one challenge that a lot of people don't know about, is that if you attack Saffron, 
whenever Saffron is in the air and you're standing behind a block, Saffron's orb will still kill you. And there are, like, Esfon didn't know this. There's a lot of people that didn't know this. And the only reason I knew it is because I used to raid lead Nax Ramos back at level 70 because I'd try to get the gear. I would raid lead it with somebody else. And by me raid leading, I mean I'd just pretty much be there for the gear. But I would tell people they're stupid whenever they would do this wrong. And then in, at level 80, uh, obviously I got immortal and we had to figure that out too. So that's how I know. It's based on what we currently know in terms of tactics. Yeah. And that frost resistance gear can't be obtained beforehand. The glacial set, for instance, for casters That's will true. only be available when Nexramus is actually live. Yep. So it's not like you can craft this stuff weeks before it comes out. You have to step into Nexramus to obtain frozen runes that are scattered throughout the instance, yep. which means you have to clear a big chunk of the raid to begin with to get a good amount of frozen runes for craftable gear. And then mm -hmm. you can start crafting that stuff. And like I said, Having a high amount of frost resistance is a must for Saffron. I mean, we're talking 130 to 170 resistance unbuffed for casters and 210 to 250 frost resistance to melees and hunters. Yet, yeah. you don't need that. You, you don't you don't need that. Like what the fuck? Like no, you don't need that at all. Like I, I give me a fucking break. Like, you, need, it, it, you don't. Like, it, it's not going to be necessary. Obviously, it'll be important, but I really don't think that you'll need it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't think so at all. That is the recommended amount of unbuffed frost mm -hmm. resistance you need for Saffron, based on the current knowledge on how to kill this boss. So I'm really curious to see if top guilds will get the Saffron in the first night and how they're going to tackle it. I mean, you can compensate a big lag of frost resistance gear with frost resistance potions because they all have a two minute cooldown and these wear off yeah, really, they can't, really Yeah, you can't fast. do that. But yeah, that's for the absolute cram de la cram guilds to think about. The more regular guilds, however, well, I think some people might not want to rate Nax Ramus seriously at all. Mm -hmm. If Blizzard follows the timeline of original WoW, Nax Ramus will be released in a time where the Burning Crusade won't be released long after which back then was also a reason why some guilds stopped really caring about Nexramus, as the gear mattered a lot less as soon as you could level to 70 and start doing things like normal and heroic dungeons. I don't think that's going to happen with Classic because I think people play Classic. Many people play Classic, like for me personally, I play Classic because I want to clear Nexramus. I want to clear those raids. So it doesn't matter if BC is out or not, I'm going to want to go back there and do it regardless. So if Blizzard does intend to release the Burning Crusade not too long after next Ramus, I think a lot of guilds might not actually be motivated enough mm -hmm. to try and clear it. Also considering how much of a time and gold sink it is. I think most guilds will definitely try to at least clear one or two bosses, but I predict some will not want to seriously do it and just wait till the Burning Crusade goes live. Of course, on the other side of the coin, there's probably a lot of hardcore raiding guilds that do want to try and clear it. Yeah, of course. I mean, after all those years of, of speculation and discussion around Nexramus, this will be the only time to attempt to clear that raid when we're still all level 60. It's... There's a lot of Classic players out there that are, like, really, really stuck on the idea that Classic is actually a lot harder than it is. You guys remember whenever people said you needed 300 unbuffed tank, uh, for, sorry, fire resistance to tank Ragnaros? Remember that? <laughs> yeah, right. You don't need any fire resistance to tank Ragnaros. And you can tank it dual wielding as, as DPS because players are just that much better at the game. Here's how much better players are at the game now. Five Priest Takar was unkillable by elitist jerks in full tier three. And the day that ZG came out, people in partial BWL gear went in there and one-shot it in less than two minutes. Players are so monumentally better than they were back then that it's not even a comparison. It, there, there's literally no chance that this raid is going to be a challenge for any serious guild. You're probably not going to get another Nerf shot at raids. this, they didn't nerf unless GG. Blizzard decides think. to split up Burning Crusade server with classic servers, so you get to keep your level 60 character, but we don't know how they're going to handle that as of right now. Yeah. As for clearing bosses, I think most guilds who will set foot in Extramus will at least be able to kill Instructor Resuvius and Anubra Khan. 
These yeah. are considered to be the easier buffs. Noth is really easy too. And aren't really hard on world buffs. Well, and I, I think he's easy. Patchwork will be a lot tougher because, like I said before, it is a huge gear check and world buffs are more of a necessity here. So it all depends on how chaotic the first couple of weeks will be and if your guild actually managed to get into next Ramus with most of its members still having their world buffs up considering the high chance of getting ganked while trying to get there. Oh Noth the Playbringer is another boss I think a lot of guilds will also be able to clear as it's admittedly yeah, he's also pretty not easy. an extremely hard fight. Keegan's also pretty easy too, from if you know what to out, do. From there on out though, I think guilds will start to hit a bit of a brick wall. For instance, the dance from Hagen is not to be underestimated. So there's four areas. You go to one area, then you go to another area, then you go to another area, then you go to another area, then you go back to that other area, then you go back to the second area, then you go back to the first area, then you go to the second area again, and then it resets. That's it. Like, I haven't done the Hegan dance in 12 years. And I would bet 500 subs that I could do it right on my first time. It's a joke. You literally just have to move to four different locations and the positioning here is key. With one wrong position potentially wiping out half your raid, Gothic and Harvest yep. are requiring a lot of coordination with your guild with the ads, and the list goes on and on. So let me summarize what I talked about. Gothic to Harvester specifically will not be hard because Gothic is built primarily around Cleave. And one of the big things on Gothic is making sure you have like both of the sides that are balanced out. And so you just put more of the people that have higher, higher Cleave on the undead side and or the ghost side and then you're never going to have a problem because even if the live side overkills then the undead side will still be able to cleave it down because they have stronger cleave it, it it's just it, it's easy talked about and my predictions for when naxxramas will hit classic first up there's no more advantages to be gained with gear and how it's yeah, itemized that will play a factor the rate content will have caught up to the state the gear is currently in World buffs will start to become a much bigger necessity and will probably cause a fair amount of hostility on your server with gankers and competing mm -hmm. guilds trying to wipe each other when trying to get the next Ramos. Consumables will also become a much bigger part of raiding which can lead to some guilds and players getting worn out and ultimately yep. not wanting to do next Ramos anymore due to the amount of preparations required. Another factor that could come into play is how exactly- I don't think there's really gonna be any prep required. I mean, it's the same as like any serious guild the, the way it is for my guild, at least, is that all the guys that I play with, we want to get buffed up. We want to go in there with consumables. Like, it's not like, oh, you have to require it or whatever. People log on a day ahead of time just so we can get buffed up and get ready because we like doing the raids and we like clearing it quickly, right? I mean, it's not like I'm not saying we get flasks every single week, but we like doing that kind of stuff as a guild. And... This is not going to be like a huge challenge or a monumental over undertaking. I feel like a lot of you guys are probably raiding classic, but you don't farm consumes. No, of course not. Why would I do that? It's boring. Um, but no, like a lot of you guys in classic probably are in the same thing, right? Like, how many of you guys are in guilds that actually like to uh, that, that like to buff up and and farm the rates? You're saying pugs could clear nax? I don't think pugs will be able to clear it for a long time uh, until like the knowledge is commonplace. Yeah, a lot of you guys probably are in the same place. So at least I am. I know that that's what my guild likes to do. Likely Blizzard will release the Burning Crusade. And if they follow the original timeline, it could also be a reason for people being demotivated to run next Ramos. In terms no, of guilds well, clearing boss to next Ramos, I suspect the top guilds to roll through most of next Ramos without too much of a problem. Yeah, I mean, yes, it's hard, but at the end of the day, all the tactics are already out there. So in terms... Why is he playing Frost? Isn't Fire better? Isn't fire better in Nax? It's not. Really, I, I thought that uh, I thought fire was better. Uh, it is. Yeah, I I I feel like. Yeah, I don't know why you play frost. Whatever. So of that, you can start reading up months before next Ramus actually drops. Though I suspect bosses like the four horsemen and especially Saffron to be a problem for them. Four Horsemen, because it is considered to be one of the hardest fights in Xramas, and to some even the hardest boss fight. It is. And Saffron simply because the of the huge amount of frost resistance gear required to do that boss. Yep. Most serious raiding guilds will probably kill a couple of bosses in Xramas, while probably struggling a lot with Loa Thep, 
the four horsemen and like the top guild saffron will be a huge frost i think lotheb will actually be hard for a lot of guilds like lotheb will probably be harder in my opinion than four horsemen based off of your tanks because lotheb is a healer check and maybe i'm just still molding over the fucking raid that i had last time here's why i'm saying it's like there are so many brain dead healers in classic they're so bad at priority healing they are so fucking bad at it and you actually do need to have some degree of planning and you do have shadow resistance potions on lotheb which helps a little bit but overall yeah i think it's going to be a clusterfuck man and also another factor with lotheb is like threat is a really big issue because like you have like these little spores you have to kill but your tank you want to gear your tank for maximum avoidance so like you don't really want to dual wield tank on lotheb for example so your tank is not going to be dealing a lot of threat where your dps is going to be able to just have this massive buff to just do like insane damage it's like they have recklessness all the time and like those two things together it's going to be a bad time for a lot of people the spores make you do no threat wait really fuck I, I totally forgot about that element okay then never mind yeah Lothab's gonna be way easier holy shit I totally forgot about that wow okay then never mind it's a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be resistance gear check for them and I predict the most killed bosses will probably be instructor Resuvius mm -hmm. and Anubra Khan yeah and there you go folks my thoughts and predictions for next you round got immortal? classic it's still kind of far I away with so Uncle bad. I never had to worry about released, pulling thread anyway. But I thought it was a fun little video to make. And hey, it we'll see matter. if my predictions will be right or not. Yeah. I guess time will tell. And that's going to do it for now. As always, I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Hamster Wheel, and have a good one. Okay. All right, let me see what some of the comments on this is. And uh, then we'll go ahead and move over. Uh, one thing can't regain classic mystery lack of unlimited information what's most efficient of a strat to use just because you know a strat doesn't automatically mean that it's easy though there are tons of guides out there for really hard video games those guys don't automatically make the content trivial uh yeah they make it a lot easier though so you have to execute whatever strategy it is i don't know like i mean it's not really <sighs> Ew, dude it's gonna be easy probably Sadly, I'd say most guilds will still find it pretty hard, especially boss like Lothab and Four Horsemen. I think Lothab and Four Horsemen will be challenging for guilds, but not necessarily from a mechanical standpoint, but from more of a uh, organizational standpoint, which is where most of Classic's real difficulty comes from, is being able to organize and make sure that you have the right people doing the right things. And so, like, even now, you have, like, a lot of guilds that are still farming. Like, right now, my guild has already started farming lures for our tanks to make sure that our tanks have enough spell hit to make sure that we get our taunts off on uh, on four horsemen so we're already planning and like ready for that to begin with uh i'll strategy for mythic ratings also out there for 90 percent of the player base yeah but mythic rating is mechanically difficult like i don't think anybody can make an argument that next ramos is mechanically difficult like it's just it's not it's just not true <laughs> uh yeah there we go when we need it yeah yeah exactly they won't even need to they can outfield damage easily yeah i, I mean this is just it, it's completely the numbers that are required as i said like that's the damage that you need to kill patchwork in your raid if you have 28 dps and many people run even more dps than that 